the International Conference of Harmonization, GCP, Revision 2, was approved in 2016. So there's a lot of monitoring expectations now. And really, it's sponsor expectations from the regulatory authorities. But this is what the sponsors expect from the monitors. Okay, so everyone is responsible for following the GCP guidelines, which we just discussed, including monitors. Monitors have a very big role in making sure that sites are producing quality of data and recording appropriately as required by GCP guidelines. There are so many possible scenarios in which a monitor may discover that a site is not producing quality data and not recording it properly. And this is exactly why monitors exist because it's almost unheard of for a site to follow the protocol fully and, and at all times. There are deviations usually for every site, for every study. And the role of the monitor is to find these deviations before they become a habit. So, for example, maybe the site is misinformed about a particular aspect of the protocol. And maybe the site interprets the protocol one way, but the sponsor and the IRB and the regulatory authorities interpreted the protocol in a completely different way. Well, really, it's the site that is interacting with the patients. So however the site is interpreting the protocol may or may not be correct, and that could potentially cause a safety hazard for the study participants. And this is exactly why monitors must go on site and look at the data and look at the protocol and look at GCP. And if they happen to find a misunderstanding or a deviation at the site level, they need to address it and correct it immediately or else it will become very common and it will become a habit for that site. And this is exactly what we are trying to avoid. And this is exactly why the role of a CRA exists. Besides patient safety, the most important task of a monitor is to ensure that only the appropriate qualified patients are enrolled in the study. And that's, that's one of the biggest issues that monitors have to deal with on a daily basis because that protocol was approved by the IRB. So any deviations from the inclusion exclusion criteria could mean that the benefits do not justify the risks because they, they, the sponsor and the IRB, they gave careful consideration to the inclusion exclusion criteria. There's usually elements in the inclusion exclusion criteria that are pertaining to the patient's medical history or the patient's concomitant medications. And it's very easy for a site to overlook one of these elements on accident, unintentionally, and it really relies on the CRA to ensure that they are providing additional oversight to the patients. How does a CRA know that the rights, safety, and well-being of subjects prevail? Well, there's many ways that this can occur. One example would be when a patient experiences an adverse event, an AE, or a serious adverse event. Well, what is the site doing? Is the well-being of the subject being put above the study? Because the well-being of the subject needs to be a higher priority than the well-being of the, of the study and of the data. So 
These are the things monitors need to look at. Did the subject have a serious adverse event? Were the necessary medical issues addressed by the site properly? Is the patient safe in the study? And you, the monitors, again, you're not a clinician, but your job is to review the progress notes and the study data to ensure that the right safety and well-being of subjects prevail, which can mean many other things. This is just one example.